just wanted to make a quick video of my new overclock, well, at least what I'm about to be testing. Hopefully it's stable. Um, currently my new computer is running an i7-3770K. I generally run it anywhere between 4.5-4.6 gigahertz. Uh, most recently 4.6 gigahertz at 1.24 volts and uh, hasn't given me any troubles. None whatsoever. Um, I do think I won the silicone lottery with this one. Now we'll just go ahead and see where I'm going to be running it today. At 4.9 at 1.34 volts. I actually have it set up at 1.325 volts in the BIOS but I do have PLL over voltage enabled. Load line calibration is set to extreme so 0% droop. And as you can see the idle temperatures are fairly decent. So let's go ahead and look at the hardware very quick. Now I will be making another video uh, explaining all the hardware in detail and my entire setup and uh, even maybe my old rig over there but for now this video is more so about that 4.9 gigahertz overclock since uh, most people have a hard time hitting 4.4 4.5 gigahertz on the new 3770k I think I am relatively lucky with this one now I am using the H100 Corsair all-in-one liquid cooling as you can see here just running it in a push solution using the standard Corsair fans to do so and behind the pump obviously is the 3770K and I am doing this on the new ASUS P8Z77V Deluxe motherboard which is just an awesome motherboard I'd highly recommend it to anybody I am actually using the standard BIOS it came with which I am not even sure which one it is at this point but I really haven't found a reason to update the BIOS as this motherboard simply hasn't given me any problems thus far. Currently running with 16 gigs of G-Skill Ripjaw Z, I believe. Memory at 2400 megahertz. And obviously the EVGA GTX 670. This is a 4 gigabyte version with backplate, which looks fantastic. And let's go ahead and see how she does in Prime 95. Now I got my fan settings set to high. Obviously inside the pump itself is a three stage pump. Low, medium, and high also set to high. Just because I'm not really sure how this overclock is going to react under Prime. Ivy Bridge has a tendency to run hot under full load, so just taking all the precautions I can. There you have it. 4.9 gigahertz. Let's go ahead and fire up Prime 95. We're going to go ahead and do a blend test. You know, just a standard blend test. Go ahead and expand that. And the test is running. As you can see, the temperature just shot up substantially. Went from mid 20s to already hitting 70 degrees, 73 degrees Celsius on core number two, or technically core number one. Go ahead and watch this for a few minutes. I'm going to be running this test for at least a few hours. Now, this is not a uh, clock speed that I plan on using day in and day out. I'm just doing this for the hell of it just to see what she'll do. See all workers are still running. So I guess the next step will be to uh, check back in a few hours. So I'll stop the video and uh, probably edit it and see how she's doing. As you can see, already hitting 80s, 82 degrees Celsius. So it's going up. 
I'm gonna check back in a little bit. Alright, well, the test has been running for about 35 minutes now. And as you can see, the temp has shot up as high as 92 degrees Celsius on core number two. Now, this is the very problem with Ivy Bridge. It does have a tendency to run hot compared to uh, Sandy Bridge, which I am just not very comfortable with. Uh, you can see the temp is going as high as 1.376 volts, which is the very reason for it spiking up as high as 92 degrees Celsius. Now, this is the very reason I will not be running this clock speed day in and day out. Even though Prime 95 isn't really the best indicator as to simulate load, though it is loading. Oh, and here's another thing. Didn't notice uh, work number four stopped running. Failed the test. Um, all the rest seem to be running. Now, of course, I could try dropping the V core a little bit, seeing if that runs stable, but even so, at 90 some odd degrees Celsius, this is just not worth it. Uh, it's believed that this is due to Intel's idea to use a thermal compound between the lid and the die itself as opposed to a fluxless, fluxless solder like they used in the Sandy Bridge in prior models. Um, people have tried to delid the processors and uh, replace the standard shitty thermal compound with something better and uh, some have had some success some have ruined their processors so that's not something I'm willing to try I guess I'll just keep it at 4.6 gigahertz where it doesn't even uh, exceed 75 degrees Celsius under 100% torture test so that's that 4.9 gigahertz though it could be done not really uh, the best way to achieve performance so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and stop the test now. And that's that. I may try and uh, push it upwards of 4.9 gigahertz again, maybe with lower voltage, but not very happy with the temperatures. As you can see, it drops down back to 1% uh, load, and the temperature drops down to uh, upper 20s, lower 30s, as it should be. So, at 4.9 gigahertz, I suppose I could run it without a problem. You know, video games are not going to put under the same stress. Nothing I really do, aside from folding, will generate that kind of heat outside of Prime 95. But it's just not something I'm comfortable, comfortable doing. It is a very expensive computer, and the processor is not cheap, 350 bucks. So it's not something I really want to destroy. For the sake of performance, 4.6 gigahertz is equivalent to roughly 4.9 gigahertz on a Sandy Bridge i7 and does use considerably less power and uh, doesn't seem to run as hot. So I think I'll stick with that. Uh, ultimately, I still do think I got a fantastic processor being able to hit 4.6 gigahertz at a mere 1.24 volts and uh, never exceeding 70 some odd degrees under Prime 95 over 20 hours is uh, is good enough for me so I'll keep it there and uh, I will be making more videos uh, the next video should be uh, posted up in the next couple days I will be doing it tonight explaining the ins and outs of the new PC build which is primarily a gaming rig so uh, look forward to uh, making that video and hope you like it